Hi everybody, it's Professor Williams and in this video I'm going to walk you through creating a statement of cost of goods manufactured which we will then use to determine our cost of goods sold for the period. I have my cost data accumulated and so on the left you'll see that I have all of my inventories, materials, work and process and finished goods and then I have all of my manufacturing costs, direct labor, material purchases, and factory overhead. So we're going to begin creating our statement with our beginning work and process inventory. And so I'm going to bring that over from my costs. And the reason we're starting with our beginning whip is that the first units that we're going to work on and complete are the ones that we didn't finish in the month of April. Now I need to find my direct materials. And for direct materials, we're going to find beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory will give us the cost of direct materials used. So I'm going to find my materials inventory at the beginning of the period and now I need to find my purchases and it tells me that I have 2.6 million and change and this gives us the cost of the materials we had available for use except I didn't use a hundred percent of my materials so now I need to find my ending materials inventory and in order to get that cost of direct materials used, I'm going, I simply took and subtracted my ending materials inventory from my cost of materials available for use. Next manufacturing cost I need is my direct labor. And direct labor is that $3.4 million. <clears throat> Next is factory overhead. And remember, factory overhead is are any costs that are not direct materials or direct labor that contribute to the production of the units of whatever it is that I'm manufacturing. Indirect labor, I have depreciation on factory equipment. Remember, we're only going to include depreciation on um, machinery, equipment, buildings that are used in production. Same way with factory utilities. We only care about the utilities for the factory or the manufacturing facility, not the utilities for the office. We had some supplies we used in production. We had, again, property taxes just on the factory, right? not on um, the office building and then we have some miscellaneous costs of production. And when I take those six and add those together it tells me that my total factory overhead was $822,260. So in order to get this total manufacturing cost what I've done is I've taken beginning work and process inventory plus direct materials plus direct labor plus factory overhead gives me my total manu manufacturing costs for May. Except we didn't finish everything we started. We've got some units in ending work and process and I have to subtract that out and so ending whip was 514.2, which is going to go right here. And I'm going to subtract that, right? because remember that ending whip, we're going to actually finish in the next period. So we don't consider those to have been manufactured in the month of May. We're going to use the cost of goods manufactured and plug that into our cost of goods sold. So you'll see that all I've done on my spreadsheet is I've just referenced that cell um, and I need two more things. I need to know 
what did I have finished? What did I have already finished at the beginning of the period? And so that's my beginning finished goods inventory. And so that gives me the cost of goods available for sale. So I had $7,460,100 worth of goods available for sale, but I didn't sell them all. I had something left over in finished goods inventory. So I have to take my ending finished goods inventory and I have to subtract that out because on the 1st of June, those that $632,000 worth of finished goods is going to be sitting in a warehouse someplace ready to be sold. So the cost of what we actually sold this period, $6,827,200. And then we had cost of goods. And that takes into account our cost of goods manufactured. As always, I hope this helped and thanks for watching.